Well, we'll start it off. Uh, again, thank everybody for joining us. Today we have a smaller group, intimate group, so we appreciate you joining us like we've been doing these uh, educational webinar series for the past four or five months now. I, don't, I, I, I lose track. Uh, my name is Eric Garnica. I'm the Senior Director of Leisure Sales for Discover the Palm Beaches, and with me today, Eva D'Amato, our Leisure Sales Manager and the one who orchestrates all of these webinars, so thank you, Eva. And we have a special guest, Bama, with us today with our sister agency, the Cultural Council of uh, our destination. So she'll be giving a presentation on our, on our area on the cultural assets, cultural components. Uh, but again, thank you for joining us and we'll go into the presentation. Thank you. Uh, I forgot, housekeeping items. We encourage everybody to submit your questions through the chat box. And at the end, since we're a smaller group today, we will have the opportunity to do a Q&A or comments, suggestions, anything that you want to say. So we're going to leave it about five to 10 minutes at the end. So thank you. There, again, there's our contact details. You can reach us both. And then please do follow us on our uh, social media, um, different platforms that we have, obviously, Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube, Twitter, and LinkedIn as well. So thank you. <clears throat> and then obviously, as I've mentioned in the, during this, uh, these presentations, in the beginning, we were focusing on virtual experiences. So it's always good to look at um, the, those, uh, those, that information. We have the Loggerhead Marine Life Center that has a virtual experience. Also our Henry Morrison Flagler Museum and a virtual Boca Raton um, virtual experience. So those are still available and you have the link on the bottom to be able to follow those. Certainly we can send that out to you as well. Uh, I keep on talking about the GBAC certification because it's very important for our destination. We were the first destination in Florida to be able to acquire this internationally acclaimed cleaning and disinfe uh, disinfection accreditation. So GBAC is a Global Bio Risk Advisory Council, which is a division of the ISSA, Worldwide Cleaning uh, Industry Association. And the airport and a few of our hotels already have been accredited by this prestigious um, organization. So obviously when they, when they go through that process, it's very strenuous process that they have to adhere to certain guidelines in order to ensure that their um, businesses are, uh, you know, uh, doing what they need to do, you know, ad adhering to these uh, disinfection and cleaning the cleanliness procedures. So very happy to have that. And we were, again, one of the first in Florida if, if, as a destination to um, implement this procedure. And then in addition to that, we are encouraging all of our um, tourism uh, partners to take the Palm Beach pledges. So again, this is to ensure that everybody's wearing facial coverings when around, when around other people in public, in public settings, uh, ensuring that we have six feet, six feet buffers between ourselves and others, and then making sure that all uh, places of business are sanitized according to the CDC guidelines. And then of course, if they're able to pursue and if they want to pursue the GBAC STAR accreditation, that they do that. So that's an additional step that we're taking uh, to ensure that the safety of all of our visitors coming to destination. And with that, I will turn it over to Eva who will give you a little bit of an overview update. And then thank you again for being with us and I'll be around for the presentation. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Eric. Um, so as many of you know, this is the kind of visual of where we're located. Um, the Palm Beaches is, is host to over 220 hotels um, and then over 75 historical and cultural districts. We're known for our, our outdoor activities as well um, as some of our arts and cultural amenities and, and attributes here. And we're gonna get really into that today, which is exciting. Um, we're located on the Atlantic, but we have Lake Okeechobee up there um, to the uh, Northwest of us as well. So you'll see some of our attributes. We have the, the Everglades and some of those wetlands as well as that Atlantic side of our destination. Uh, you can easily access our destination on the I-95 corridor. I know a lot of our guests want to travel uh, and just drive. They're not ready to get on the plane. So if there's anyone in our drive markets, we're easily accessible on the I-95 uh, corridor. And then in addition to that, 
Palm Beach International is our main airport. So if you um, cannot find any flights into Palm Beach International, there's another two options that you have. So we're just located in a great area that's very easy to get to. We have Fort Lauderdale, Hollywood, and Miami also offering flights to the area. And then it's a quick trip, 50 minutes, 30 minutes to the destination. You can see some of the carriers located. And then if you have any questions about that, we can always get you in uh, contact with our airport team. Uh, and then during this time, it's just a great time. We keep saying it, we keep reminding everybody for those that are ready to visit the Palm Beaches, we do have different offers such as the resort credits or free night offers or re Florida residence rates. Certain hotels do have travel agent um, incentives and bonuses for travel agents that would like to come stay at the hotels. Um, but if at any point in time, it's a great time to come to the Palm Beaches, the, the uh, summer season, this is our down season, we are excited to have you here and we really try and kind of show that by promoting more with your stay. But um, we are very excited today to welcome Bama from Cultural Council, Council for Palm Beach County. Uh, within our destination we are so historic and we did a kind of an overview of the destination a couple weeks ago but from everything from our history to our arts to our culture uh it's kind of been ingrained and embedded in in the palm beaches and i mean anything from some of our food and our restaurants which are some of my favorite ways to experience culture in the palm beaches to some of our art and our history so she's going to go a little bit further into that um, and I'm excited to hear more myself. I'm excited to be here, Eva. Thank you so much, Eva and Eric, for welcoming me to join you. And thank you to our guest for joining us today. I'm delighted to have a chance to give you an update on what's happening in the cultural community of the Palm Beaches. About myself, I'm a native of Palm Beach County and I manage a program called the Cultural Concierge Program. When you were mentioning, Eva, that there were virtual experiences and people could go online and look ahead and learn a little more about the destination through Discover the Palm Beaches, I wanted to point out that the cultural elements are also highlighted on our website, which is palmbeachculture.com. There's an events calendar, there's information on virtual experiences, and also on many of our cultural organizations that have taken precautions to reopen. This has been a really challenging year for our, the arts community. And in a normal year, we would have 42,000 plus cultural options for visitors. This year, the number is going to be down, but we still have some mighty fine selections for you to explore and enjoy safely whenever your guests are ready to return. So I thought today what I would do is try and let you know um, a little more about some of the options you can share with your clients so that when they're ready to drive and head to the Palm Beaches or to fly into PBI, um, they'll know what to do and feel at ease and know that they're safe and that we've all taken this Palm Beaches pledge very seriously. Let's go to the next slide. This is the Boca Raton Museum of Art, and I thought I'd begin our little travel um, destination, just hit a few highlights in Boca Raton and a few other communities that will give you a sampling of what's available. Um, as you see the masked uh, visitors at the entryway, um, this is standard protocol. There's touchless payments. There are opportunities to come and stroll. The galleries are open and very, very sparsely populated which in the world of art is a real advantage. Let's go to the next slide. When you wanna have a beautiful morning or a beautiful afternoon or a beautiful evening, um, you might head to Boca Raton from anywhere in the destination. All of our hotels are a convenient drive to any of our 39 cities. And this is Meisner Park, which is a, a beautiful um, five block wide pedestrian plaza filled with retail and dining and outdoor vistas that are, are quite lovely. At the very northern end of that, next slide, is the entrance to the Boca Raton Museum of Art. It's adjacent to an amphitheater. The Museum of Art is open now on Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, and it's um, open from 11 a.m. Sundays 
It's open from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. And it's a great destination. As I said, if you want to go when it's not crowded and you want to really feel something like connect with art in person, not just look at a screen, there's quite a nice series of exhibitions there. Let's go to the next slide and have a look. This slide is aptly named Mask, and it's by the photographer Phyllis Galumbo. Um, she has focused on cultures and their ceremonies that involve creating a new persona through art and uh, uh, putting on different masks and faces to explain um, how we see ourselves in our community. It's kind of a fascinating glimpse into different cultures from around the world. And as you see, the gallery space is very large and quite beautiful. That's one exhibit. It's only there until September 20th um, when it will rotate and new exhibits will open in early October. So you can go, you see at the bottom of your screen, culturalconcierge.com. That's a landing page. If you want information from me directly, you can write there and say what information you'd like and I can connect with you personally about what new exhibits will be open and what time they're opening in case you want to make some recommendations for excursions for your clients. The next slide is an exhibit that will be on display right through December this year, and it is exquisite. What you're looking at is paintings on 10 foot tall panels in a style of um, Art Nouveau uh, that was at the turn of the 20th century, just emerging and out of it came Art Deco and Streamline Modern and many other contemporary art movements. This was, uh, these paintings are, are a surprise and that they're, they're rarely shown. They were commissioned works by the photographer, Edward Steichen. Most of you will probably be familiar with his beautiful fine art photography and his seminal works in that medium, but you may not know that he was trained as such a fantastic painter or that he was accepting commissions earlier in his career. And this is one of those, this collection is being seen all seven panels and, and, and as I said, 10 feet tall, you can imagine the one you're looking at on the left is, is quite a glorious, um, quite a glorious experience to stand before each of them and just study what he's put there. The title of the exhibition is An Exaltation of Flowers. So you'll see um, some symbolism and there'll be information about each of the images that are portrayed. The next slide, please. Another place you might head to if your clients enjoy being outdoors and want fresh air and some mild exercise, love art and history and architecture, and want that coastal Florida vibe is downtown Lake Worth Beach, which is located centrally in Palm Beach County on the shores of the Intercoastal Waterway at the Lake Worth Bridge, and they span across the bridge to the beach. The building on the left is the headquarters for the Cultural Council for Palm Beach County. And on the right, I thought it'd be fun to show you a picture of it when it was first constructed as the Lake Theater in 1940. It has hardly changed on the outside, although we've repurposed it as our headquarters indoors. When it was um, first opened in 1940, it was the largest first run movie house in all of Florida and it was air conditioned. It's still air conditioned today, but inside you'll find instead a beautiful lobby with an incredible frieze by the artist Tom Otterness. To the left, the window on the left you see is called the Uniquely Palm Beach Gift Shop and it's artisan works, artisanal pieces by local artists. So you can find exclusive one of a kind gifts there. The window on the right, the smaller window, uh, as you look down those wide sidewalks of Lake Worth is where the cultural concierge office is located, which is a visitor information center. So again, people on foot have a place to go that's welcoming and going to give them information. And then the, what used to be the movie space has been converted into a beautiful gallery, series of galleries with fine art inside. It's free and it's a great starting place in Lake Worth for your walk. Let's go to the next slide because that's the back of our building. Um, there's an open space and a three story tall mural by the artist Cobra from Brazil. You may be quite familiar with his work. He's seen around the world. He installed this piece, painted this beautiful um, image of Martin Luther King um, about three years ago on the back of our building. And it's extraordinary. Every day I walk up to it, I'm still impressed at how 
how, how did he make this man plaid? And look at the scale and the scope of this work that he did with spray paints on scaffolding. Lake Worth Beach is filled with public art and murals, and there are maps available. So you can go on a, a mild outdoor walk and scavenger hunt and be delighted at every turn and get a lot of photographic moments. There's also plenty of available shopping or outdoor dining so that you can keep your distance from others, wear those masks, and really have a great time. If you are interested in even more exercise, the next slide shows a kind of really fun opportunity. It's a coastal community. A lot of you probably have clients who are bird watchers and kayakers and nature photographers. This is a great little spot to go to. Um, it's called Snook Islands. It's at the foot of the Lake Worth Bridge on the north west corner and it's over 500 feet of observation um, platforms and boardwalks that overlook mangroves that have been restored these are baby oyster catchers and birders love to come here it's free it's open there's even a kayak put in so let's go to the next slide those that want activity and don't want to bring a kayak can rent kayaks. Those are available nearby and go exploring all along this coastline through the waterway. It's a, an absolutely beautiful Florida experience for people. And it's very, very relaxing and outdoors. There's no reason not to do that at this time. And who doesn't need a change of scenery and a little bit of nature? In the water, you find everything from rays to dolphins to manatees to jumping mullets. So you never know what you'll see. There are also osprey and eagles and lots of interesting birds to see while you're there. Um, that's underneath the Lake Worth Bridge. Let's go to the next slide because you can walk over that bridge and underneath that bridge, and you'll see even more of the public art that we have. This one by the artist Hula. This is a woman emerging from the waterline, and it was painted by standing on paddle boards and scaffolding. Um, quite a beautiful surprise. And when you're down under the bridge and looking at Snook Islands in Lake Worth Beach, she's there to surprise and delight you. And you can walk down a fishing pier a little farther. That's there, it's public get even closer and get some nice photographic uh, images of that. But if you go over the bridge, next slide please, you end up across A1A at the um, beautiful Lake Worth Beach. Um, this is uh, an image of that beach. You see the pier on the right and the sun rising in the morning. This is a depiction in chalk because Lake Worth Beach in February each year, late February, the last weekend, is home to the Lake Worth Street Painting Festival. So put that on your, on your thinking cap for another year from now when that would probably return and the entire downtown area is filled with chalk artist work like what you're seeing here. The next slide shows what the actual subject was and what you'll find anytime. And that is a beautiful, clean, open public beach with parking adjacent to it. It's an easy place to get to and get around. If you're interested in doing deep sea fishing, you can do that from this pier and rent equipment uh, for your, your travelers. So those that want that kind of outdoor experience, it's there and, and it's part of how this town has not changed much since the 1950s. It's just a way of life to be at the beach. Next slide. Combination of art and beach and exercise is really appealing. We're going to travel north like these bicyclists right along the waterfront at Lake Worth Beach up to the next slide, please. There are 47 miles of beach in Palm Beach County along the eastern seaboard. We started in Boca. We went to the center of the county to Lake Worth Beach. And the topography of this area is more than just beach. I think Eva mentioned that it extends all the way to the west to Lake Okeechobee. In Lake Okeechobee, you can find fishing, um, freshwater fishing. You can find segments of the Everglades. You can find guides that will take you out on excursions to photograph with infrared film at night under the stars in nature. There are lots of beautiful outdoor opportunities available. If you just know who to call and know what your clients are interested in. That's what the cultural concierge program is here to help facilitate. So don't hesitate to use that. Next slide. The north end of the Palm Beaches here is a, a, a vision of what um, converges all at once, the Jupiter Inlet, 
the Atlantic Ocean to the far horizon and the lighthouse watching over it. Many of you know this, this venue. Um, the lighthouse was built for navigational purposes in 1860 and is the oldest in Florida. It's a magnificent view from the top where you can take all of this in 360 degrees and go to the the back of the lighthouse, you'll see the Loxahatchee River. There's a picture here coming up the next slide, which is Florida's, oh, I'm sorry, I meant to, to tell you that there is on Monday nights in the evening, there is outdoor yoga at the lighthouse and you can register for that. Bring your own mat, space apart and sit overlooking the intercoastal outlet the, the Jupiter Inlet and the ocean, that view we just had, this looks right onto that. It's under the largest banyan tree you can imagine, um, right next to that lighthouse. So that's just another little surprise that's here in the destination, and there are many, many others. The next slide will show you the scenic and historic Loxahatchee River. If any of you have ever heard of Trapper Nelson, who was a land, um, uh, kind of a hermit sort of person. He bought a lot of property along the river and he made a homestead there. This is a favorite place to canoe and kayak and be out in the old Florida wilderness along the Loxahatchee River. There are also trails. There's some um, River Bend Park in Jupiter. All of these take advantage of that forested topography, which um, is just another piece of Florida life as well. Um, the, the land where the lighthouse is and all of this area along the river was originally settled 5,000 years ago by the Yega Indian tribe. And there are mounds and, and historical um, signs and information throughout this area. So it's, it's something to, to put on your radar and let you explore. Next, please. Delray Beach, farther south from Lake Worth is the home to the Murakami Museum and Japanese Gardens. In the 1920s, our history was augmented by the presence of a Japanese settlement of colonists who wanted to do farming, and they grew beautiful bell peppers and pineapples and tomatoes and enjoyed this land, which was eventually given by George Murakami to the Palm Beach County Park System. For your visitors that don't know about it, it's miles of beautiful trails with, in, with individual manicured Japanese gardens. Each one of them unique. It's very meditative. It's very healing space to just be out in nature, but still to have that almost museum-like historical perspective. There's on site a beautiful museum indoors also. Next slide. This will show you the scope and the size of the, the campus. The museum building is the larger building. You come through that and it's built like a Japanese estate. Um, it's built and organized as a garden using plants that grow really well in our climate here in Palm Beach County, but in the style of traditional Japanese gardens, all of which have deep meaning. Um, there are sculpted hillsides made of bushes and hedges, for example, um, and you can do a self tour. If, now, go ahead. The next outdoor venue I wanted to highlight is also open. One of our cultural organizations is the Palm Beach Zoo and Conservation Society. Um, the zoo has taken a lot of precautions. And it's been over the years, it's just gotten better and better when you visit the zoo because it's got a lot of shaded walkways and a lot of vistas. There's a complete map of it available, very handy to find your way through the zoo and enjoy it with children or with really anybody. And one of the Malaysian tigers has given birth recently to three little tiger cubs. And those cubs just went on display this week so that you can see the mother and the cubs exploring the world around them. It's an additional cost to be there to take that exhibit in, but it's, it's a rare opportunity to see these new cubs in, uh, in, in their young lives. Onward. Next slide. This is a three-toed sloth. There are animal encounters at the zoo and opportunities if you want. I just wanted to throw this in because it's kind of fun. If you're doing a virtual presentation and you want to engage a sloth, for example, to join you as a guest and amuse your clients, uh, the zoo has a really cool opportunity to do that. They'll put a camera person from one of the keepers with the animals and you can have them be part of your presentation. It's different and it's fun and it kind of lights a spark under people. 
to come and see the Palm Beaches and enjoy the zoo and get out a little bit at a time when they're ready. It's memorable. Next slide. Um, we are, as, as I mentioned at the beginning of my presentation, taking the Palm Beaches pledge very seriously. And we understand that families with children at home and um, they need learning opportunities and they need exercise and they need to be able to go places safely or they're all gonna go crazy. So a fun opportunity is to go to the South Florida Science Center and Aquarium. Um, the indoor spaces have all um, been very carefully uh, limited in terms of the size and number of people there. Masks are required. Social distancing is being observed. Sanitation is happening all around you all the time. And as of yesterday, we had 13 cultural organizations that have reopened, and this is one of them, that are pursuing GBAC certification, the Global Biorisk Advisory Council gold standard of, of uh, sanitation certification. The, the Science Center has indoor vistas, but a lot of people don't know that it also has a wonderful science trail in the back. And it even has something called a conservation course, a mini golf course that explores how to save water and how to live sustainably in nature. So it makes for a really fun destination for families who are homeschooling children and trying to help them have meaningful and fun educational experiences, because it doesn't all have to be in front of a computer. Next slide. Finally, our cultural sector is broad and deep, but only certain things have opened. And as they're opening, we're planning to promote them with special offers for visitors with a campaign called Mosaic 2020. We would normally do Mosaic in the month of May and Mosaic would be when the entire month was focused on arts and cultural opportunities for visitors in the Palm Beaches. It's a month of shows, art, ideas, and culture. Now we have months because we understand that this is going to be a gradual return to travel and we're preparing to keep um, in, in, in on your radar and um, to keep you informed of what's here and what's available. And we would invite you to go to mosaicpbc.com that's one you might want to write down mosaicpbc for palm beach county.com to get on an email list and then it's it's all you have to do is go once and sign up to get notified about new deals when they become available later in the year our hope um, that that there will be wonderful opportunities locally to do some local day trips overnight trips weekend trips little staycations um, just to get out of Dodge for a little while. We hope you'll come to the Palm Beaches, send your guests to us, and that we can be of service to you, offering some incentives that will, will just help sweeten the, the prospect for those visitors. Um, I wanna thank Erica and Eva for letting me speak to you about all of this. And I wanted to reiterate that the Cultural Council for Palm Beach County is here to serve cultural travelers and certainly the cultural concierge program is, is here definitely to help those of you in the travel industry as you find your own way uh, with your clients. So please take advantage of that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bema, for that very insightful information on all of our cultural assets and destination. And a lot of people don't think that we as a destination on the Southeast corridor of Florida would have so much, so much to offer from a cultural perspective and we do. So it's very exciting to, to be able to share this with all of you. And every time we're out, we, we tell, uh, you know, we tell our travel professionals and, and consumers as well. And they're amazed that when they come and they experience this, uh, that we have such a diversity, you know, obviously we have the beaches and all of the, uh, fun activities, but uh, from from a water perspective, but this is also really great. And for me, it's it's really exciting to have have this to offer to all of you. So you know, you know, Eric, it makes a fun combination because everybody wants to go to the beach and have some fun and enjoy that beautiful blue water, and they also want to put their clothes on and go somewhere else and do something else. It's nice to know that there are a lot of options. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, we we have so much to offer from a tourism um, destination perspective that it complements well. You know, the cultural the outdoor, the water, the restaurants, the culinary, the different festivals. Um, so yeah, so thank you for that. That was very, very nice presentation. Um, and with that, I don't know if there's any comments or questions that we can answer at this point. Um, Eva? 
Are you seeing anything? Uh, no, we, we don't have any questions, which is great. I mean, there's no better person than Bama to take a deep dive into our cultural assets here. Um, MT did call out the birding. She is a big birding um, wetlands walker. I'm with her. There's so much to see here. And she knew the oyster catchers, I bet. That's great. Yeah, I mean, I bet she did. She uh, she's been she's been very very into that with us. And um, for anyone that's interested in the the wetlands and the birding, we do have a blog post uh, that shows different areas within Palm Beach County to do and see those specific uh, birds and be in that that type of area. Um, and uh, I was just kind of echoing on Eric's comments here, but it, it's so nice to be able to go somewhere where it's not all museums and it's, it's, you have that outdoor experience and you can socially distance, whether you're walking through murals or you're walking through some of the shops or being on the piers. Uh, it's, it's great to be able to see, I mean, you have Boca Raton and Palm Beach Island that show a ton of history just by looking at things from the outside, just by walking down Worth Avenue or being in Lake Worth and seeing that theater. So it's a great experience in the Palm Beaches that we have both, that we can also still enjoy our culture and, and arts and, and um, either be in the museums or for those that would prefer to be outside, we have it too. So it was great to hear. I mean, some of those things are, are, are my favorite. I didn't know about the local artesian shop outside of the Cultural Council's office. So you need to come shop. I, it's might amazing. Be, I might have to stop in there. <laughs> we have not reopened yet at the Cultural Council. We're going to do that in um, probably early November. We're taking things very cautiously. The staff has been working remotely. And so they're all coming back to the office next week and rotating in small numbers to keep everything super safe. And then as we watch numbers, we're in phase two in Palm Beach County now. So we wanna maintain that. And um, I think, you know, in future months, we'll be bringing even more updates, but it is possible to go out and very safely have an absolutely beautiful weekend here already. And, uh, you know, and we, you have Ava and Eric to help guide you. Absolutely, it would be our pleasure to assist in anything that we can, so. Absolutely, well. Uh, I guess with that, we only have a few minutes left. Uh, we thank you uh, for all of you that participate continuously. Ricardo, good to see you again. I know we were wondering where you were at the beginning, <laughs> but you did sign on, so thanks for that. Uh, and we will continue our series next week. Uh, stay tuned for the next, uh, the next content that we will provide. And again, thank you for being on. We hope that you're all safe. Uh, stay safe and have a good rest of the week. And again, thank you, Bama, for a great presentation. Thank and, you. And uh, take care and thanks again. Have a good day. Bye, now. Bye all. Thank you so much.